And in June, um, students from uh, the 9th class and the 11th class uh, have the national exams. So as for the uh, exams, uh, nine year students uh, have got four exams, two are obligatory, and that is Russian and mathematics, and two of them are optional, so they can choose uh, the subjects uh, which they like. Uh, so most of our students from my school uh, choose uh, social studies and um, English as their optional exams. As for uh, 11th class, actually this is uh, the same, uh, two obligatory subjects and two optional, and uh, students uh, choose uh, two optional uh, subjects which they will need um, to enter the university. or three terms during the school year so this uh, and we have autumn holidays winter holidays um, spring holidays and summer holidays summer holidays are the longest uh, if you are not a nine year student or 11 year student then you have three months of holidays as for the Autumn uh, holidays and spring holidays, uh, they usually last for about a week, and winter holidays for two weeks. Um, the subjects. Well, um, I wouldn't say that uh, we have uh, a lot of subjects to choose from. Usually everything is obligatory and everything is included in the curriculum. Um, our students uh, study such subjects as Russian, mathematics, literature, biology, uh, chemistry, social studies, physical education, um, foreign languages, so English uh, is obligatory and um, uh, they also study a second language and uh, in different schools it can be different. Sometimes there is a choice or sometimes there isn't a choice. Uh, at our school uh, we have French, uh, but usually it is either French or uh, German or sometimes Spanish and very rarely Chinese. Um, <coughs> we start um, learning English um, at primary school. So it can be the first or the second form, again, in different schools it's uh, different. And uh, the number of lessons also differs. So if the school specializes in languages, then uh, of course students will have more lessons. Uh, for example, if it's primary school, um, I'm talking about our private school, uh, in primary school, um, pupils have four lessons of English every week. Um, as for classes from five to nine, we have uh, five lessons a week. And uh, in high school, they have uh, six lessons a week. But uh, if it's a state school, then usually it's about uh, two or three lessons a week. Um, lessons uh, begin at uh, half past eight and uh, if it's a state school I would say that uh, the studies finish at about two o'clock and as I have already said we finish at about four or five o'clock in the evening. Um, let's uh, speak uh, about uh, state exams. So as I have already said, uh, our students uh, take um, national exams uh, in classes 9 and uh, 11. So um, as for the marks, um, they um, change, uh, they are uh, they're different in classes 9 and uh, 11. 
So actually, uh, for every subject, there is a special grading system, and uh, there are uh, different points which you can get. And then we uh, change those points into our uh, marks, like as I have already said, uh, a five, a four, a three. And uh, so the same can be said about uh, 11, 11 year students. So, um, homework. Uh, this is the question uh, which actually worries a lot of uh, teachers in Russia, and not only teachers, but uh, parents as well. Because there are a lot of complaints about too much homework. And, well, actually, uh, we are not supposed to give too much homework uh, for our students, but I would say, again, that it depends um, on the subject and on the number of lessons uh, pupils have every week. Um, <coughs> say that um, nowadays a lot of people say that uh, there are a lot of disadvantages uh, connected with uh, the system of exams in Russia. Um, I would say that our uh, tests copy um, some ideas from other countries, uh, but the difference is at about English um, that um, lots of teachers don't like the criteria uh, for assessment because well there are lots of things uh, which you uh, need to remember and even if you don't like something you should uh, do it uh, like it is said in the criteria and uh, that is the problem. So as for the students' books, um, of course, um, we are supposed to use the books uh, which uh, have been approved by the government. But uh, if you work at a private school, um, actually you can uh, choose the books. Uh, I'm speaking about English now. And um, <coughs> parents uh, pay some extra money to buy uh, these uh, students' books. And they don't need to return them at the end of the year because they are theirs already. Uh, but uh, usually um, we have a school library and um, all the students can get uh, the um, textbooks from the library and at the end of the year they need to return them. So <coughs> that's it. And uh, when um, students um, finish school, they have uh, an opportunity to go to a vocational college, for example, and it can be done after class 9 or after class 11. And, uh, of course, uh, you can uh, go to uh, a university and get higher education there. So that's it, I think. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer. Okay, thank you. So I can comment. Okay, thank you, Margaret. Okay, thank so you. I've got, uh, yeah, I've got also uh, very senior teacher say senior in Russia, and uh, I would like just to add some information because uh, Margaret works in Moscow, right? Yes. So Moscow is a bit different from uh, regions, all right? So as far as I'm from Skop region, um, we have also 40 minutes the lesson plans, 40 minutes. And that's different, for example, in Ukraine, because I came from Ukraine to Russia, and Ukraine is still 45 minutes. And in Ukraine, for example, school starts earlier, at 7.30 or at 8 o'clock. And when I found out that in Russia it's 8.30, my own kids uh, began to feel better. You know, the lesson is shorter, and the school starts later. 
So they, they can, you know, just feel better about this. Uh, also, I would just put a small notice that private schools aren't so popular in Russia. Am I right? Yeah. So uh, maybe 90% of our um, Russian kids go to state school. It's uh, nothing to pay and uh, every school, yeah, actually whatever it has their advantage or disadvantage, but we try teachers at state schools always try to do their best there. They try to deal with these horrible poor schools, <laughs> they try to deal with difficult students and with parents, whatever, you know, but um, it's, it's quite a good quality. Uh, another point uh, about homework. Unfortunately, theoretical uh, Russia is like this, and we have just 40 minutes. For primary, at uh, the state school, there are only two lessons, 40 minutes, but a huge, you know, large course book. And um, secondary school, they have three lessons, which is also not enough, you know, and especially if you have to prepare them for state exams. So three lessons, 40 minutes, is not enough. That's why most of the teachers uh, give homework a lot, you know, but they didn't have time to do, to finish, so completed the lesson, they just did hand it uh, in this homework. Uh, the second, I was a bit luckier maybe in my state school in the region because nobody controlled in case, I mean that nobody could enter the lesson and see what I'm doing. You know, the my director just was happy about the results of the exams, about tests, whatever. Uh, of course, I wrote everything according to the curriculum, you know, so my teaching journal and everything, but in fact, I was able to choose the tasks and the activities, all right? Uh, and about state exam. What difference, for example, I, uh, between state exams and Cambridge exams uh, in Russia? Uh, when I, oh, I, all my life, I prepared for Cambridge exams, and when I came to Russia and they asked me help in their state exams, I just opened and I was just shocked. I found there a mix of different levels of stuff. You know, when you open a Cambridge exam, you can be sure that kids, for example, exam kids, they have a two level class. <laughs> but in Russian state exams, in the, for the ninth third class or the ninth form, you will find some tasks from A2 and some from C1, something like word formation, for example. It's just, you know, uh, just a mix. Uh, also, there is no uh, any help, any support for teachers to prepare for state exams. I, I mean, comparing to Cambridge assessment, right? We've got handbooks, we've got every year tests. To, so, so there are much support. However, for Russian state exam, um, unfortunately, there is not much. And um, students' book. Uh, do you have Moscow books enough in the school library for everyone? We don't. In regions, I, I don't know if other teachers in regions have this problem, but in our region, we don't have enough <coughs> students' book, English students' book for our students. So, for example, you have 20 kids in class, and you can get only 8, and you, if you are lucky, you can get 10 books. That's all. Uh, workbooks, parents buy workbooks in our region, they pay for it. Um, it's not, it doesn't cost much, and they actually, not, that's not only for English, they buy workbooks for every uh, school subject they need, and library provides uh, the course books, the textbooks. Uh, what else? Oh, uh, why consider our books, textbooks in Russian schools, state schools horrible? They are written by Russian writers, and uh, the language, which is used for primary school mostly, it's fine, uh, but start from um, secondary and high school, you know, uh, he, the one term is study something like space. One term, can you imagine that? Where kids will practice this language? Planets, the name of planets, what is the difference between satellite and the star and all the things. So this is not really useful for their real life. Okay, so and now, uh, if there is no questions about Russian system, you have one. I don't have a question exactly, but I have a comment on the homework thing. Uh, every year we get students who come from the Russian education system, lab collector, and uh, I give them tasks, essays or projects or reports to write. And every year there are a large number of the students who 
go onto the internet and plagiarize. Mm. They, they just take it directly from the net and they hand it to me. I was a suspicious man, and I told you I am suspicious. Every essay I get, every report I get, I put part of the text in Google into uh, Rambler or Yandex, and I see what comes up. I put it into a few places. Then, of course, problems. Because in Finland, for example, if you plagiarize <coughs> the university, you are immediately expelled from the course, mm -hmm. and you are not allowed to sit a state exam for five years. If you plagiarize, your, your education is basically over. And, and yeah, you kind of wonder. I will tell you why, you know? you I will tell you the reason. But, but yeah, it seems to me that they must be overloaded with homework and they feel that they just need to somehow exactly. put it in. And I will tell you more. Uh, we have something that is called get the z. Get means ready, the mm -hmm. z homework. What does it mean? An open book um, has a book with keys, right? Mm -hmm. For students. Mm -hmm. And moreover, uh, may, I, don't know, I don't want my colleagues to be angry, but minimum, Half of uh, colleagues from state schools, they use this key to check the homework. Mm -hmm. And in many cases, the keys are wrong. <laughs> and they give wrong marks. Uh, they, give, they give wrong marks, you know. And then students, I, I, I met it several times, you know, in my life. Uh, and then the, my, my, my students come to me and say, oh, no, what is wrong? Blah, blah, blah. I say, no, we are all right. Let's go to the teacher. And then she says, mm -mm, feel embarrassing, you know. But that's why they because they have really plenty to do so. Uh, it's not a good way to to do, but they try it just to finish it. it. It sounds like both have too much to do, the teachers and the students. Exactly, no mm -hmm. sense to do that. Is there a lot of pressure huh, on the teachers for their students to do well? So, so uh, and I mean, from the state, is there a lot yes, of pressure? we. we amount of marks that we should give during the term, you know, and when you have uh, 25, 30 students in the class and you have just 40 minutes, uh, you are not always able to give the amount of marks that you are asked, you know, so they just give homework to get some marks and put it in the journal, that's how it goes. Thank you so much, Tatiana. Kazakhstan education system, uh, which makes really difference, you know, uh, this year. Not much difference. So, uh, basically, the structure is the same as our systems come from the same root, Soviet, system, Soviet educational system. So, uh, the backgrounds are very much similar, but there is um, two or three differences that have already appeared between our systems. So first of all, as we live in Kazakhstan, we have to learn two languages. Two languages as native languages is Kazakh language and Russian language. So we have Russian schools and Kazakh schools. So in Kazakh schools, all the education is provided in Kazakh only. In Russian schools, the instructions are given in Russian. So Russian kids study Kazakh as a second language. And Kazakh kids study Russian as a second language. Is it different from Russian? I mean, very different. For example, Ukrainian and Russian are similar. Yeah, because well, Kazakh well, language well. is Turkic. Turkic. Oh, so it's very different then. Yeah, it's very different. So, um, in 1990s, our government has introduced the trilingual policy. So it means that our kids have to speak English as a native language as well. So that we could um, open up the world for ourselves and travel around the world, uh, share ideas, so bring the best ones to Kazakhstan and develop our country. So it has created a great stress for our education system because our teachers are not ready for this. So, and starting about two, from two years ago, so all our Teachers, no matter what school it is, private or state, must take English trainings. So that every summer they go to summer schools and improve the English level. Uh, what else? And whatever the subject, right? 
no, no matter what the no, subject they teach, teach and after all, we need to talk to them. So English teachers are not in favor, unfortunately. So they have to do it themselves. Um, what else? Uh, there are some disadvantages of this because we faced several problems. So first of all, it is a brain drain, as people of other nationalities have been leaving Kazakhstan. So for other countries like Russia, Ukraine, Israel, uh, European countries, because they can find better jobs, better living conditions. So most intellectuals workers, intellectual workers have left Kazakhstan. So we have a problem. So with specialists. So secondly, uh, there is a policy of uh, returnees, ethnic returnees. So these are uh, Kazakh people uh, from other countries come back to their historical motherland. So and usually they are of low education. So they, they can speak only Kazakh, they usually don't know foreign languages apart from the language of the country they come from. So, and as a result, we face these problems that we don't have to have uh, No one is ready to push this program. So, the, the second is that Kazakhstan is a member of Bologna process. So we want to become the part of European educational system. And moreover, we have signed an agreement with Finland. So to learn from Finnish <laughs> professionals how to uh, arrange, establish and develop the educational system in Kazakhstan. Did it start already working? Yes, yes. Uh, there were I don't remember how many, but two groups already visited Finland. So not like Finnish professors are coming to Kazakhstan. No, no, no Kazakhstan specialists come to Finland to learn from Finnish specialists. Just as an aside, I know I've met some scientists who are doing exactly the same thing. So they come in the summer, the teachers have language courses themselves, and then in September until December, they go into the schools and they observe and they take notes and they take part and then they leave at the end of the year and they really like these places I would love it too hmm? That's all? Any questions? Yeah, you have to do only the best for your educational system to get everything uh, <laughs> I do not work for, for state schools I would have a private school somewhere. Okay, thank you so much So, any questions again about Kazakhstan. All right. So, Mira, it's your turn. So now we will get um, the information about uh, two Arabic countries. Okay. First, we start with uh, Lebanon, and then we go on with uh, with Moroccan school. So, Lebanon school. Hello. Hello. school at ages. It's an obligation to start from KG2, then 3 to grade 1. KG1 is not an obligation. Uh, we have from grade 1 to grade 12, and the state uh, exams is through grade 9 and grade 12. It's an obligation to finish the two state uh, exams. If they fail the state exams, they have an option to repeat it in September or in August to, for a second chance. And then they go on to the secondary classes and so on. After they finish the school, which is either private or public school, they move either to the vocational, which is also an optional uh, choice after grade nine or grade eight for students who can't finish the academic years. Uh, or they go to the universities and usually we have public schools and private schools. Private schools are very, very expensive in Lebanon. Uh, regarding the income, regarding the income of uh, the residents or the Lebanese people, the private schools are so 
expensive. The public schools, uh, we used to pay about 200 to $300 a year, and sometimes they pay them back. The government pays them back. Sometimes they give the, uh, the books for free, and sometimes you have to pay something like uh, $100 for uh, all the books for the class, and you keep the books. The uh, private schools, approximately how much? The private? The minimum is, uh, you can say, about $3,000, the minimum. Per year or per month? No, it's per, per year. I'm talking about the income of the Lebanese, it's too much. Perhaps it's something normal for all the... So it might be not so popular also. And it's popular because uh, all the people uh, who work in Africa or who work abroad, they uh, register their students or their children in private schools, not in public schools. But now there is a kind of challenge between public and private schools, especially the secondary classes. The public schools are more better than the private schools, so uh, uh, the parents are moving their children from the public to the private because it's cheaper and it has the same education level. Uh, we usually give the students in school six to seven lessons. Each lesson is 55 minutes and it sounds so frustrating for the students. Usually the seventh period, which starts at two o'clock, the students never listen to the teacher. It's uh, it's a habit. They how long is the break then? If you have fifty-five minutes lesson, how how long are the okay. breaks? Okay, students leave for break at eleven o'clock. Most of them come to school uh, without breakfast, so they start eating in class. So um, the the break is at eleven and it finishes at eleven thirty, and students find it not enough to eat to have their own breakfast or to eat. So that's why it's a little bit frustrating, mostly because the lesson is 55 minutes. And they once did it as a 45 minutes in Ramadan. You know why? So uh, the, the students were very happy. They, uh, they said that the class sounds like uh, it's quick and it's uh, enjoyable. So the 55 minutes is, is a bit frustrating. Uh, yeah, the school uniforms, uh, the school uniform is an obligation in Lebanon. I think there are some schools uh, next to Beirut, uh, very, very, very expensive schools. They ask the students to come with whatever they would like. But if you would ask about the percentage, it's 99% of the students in school use the uniform. The uniform, which is usually blue, dark blue or light blue. Not like, not like every school has um, its own color. Yeah, some schools have uh, the squared ones, the white and yellow. But in Russia, every school has its own color. You know, one school is black, they decide it. Yes, the schools square. decide the uniform's color, but it's usually a dark blue or light blue. It's we have dark blue and black. Yes. yes. Uh, the grades, the students are graded, and uh, this also creates frustration for the students. They hate grades. But if we try to assess students through other options, we don't find other options. So grades, uh, usually the, the least one is over 20. Uh, if uh, they're studying something like French language, it's over 10. And we have uh, the important uh, lessons like the mathematics and the social studies and so on, they are over 80. We have the Arabic over 100 because it's the the most important as a language. So for every subject you have a special school. Special math. Yes, you're not talking about exams. I'm talking about it about in class exam. and out of the class. In the state's exam and also in the class. Okay. It's the same. So uh, when you go to class, on the first day they explain how, uh, how many points we have for each uh, lesson. Sometimes, for example, the social studies in, uh, in economics class, it's over 60, but in another class it's over 20, because their focus there is economics, and their focus here is something like geography or something like that. So it depends on the class also. It's not mutual over all the classes in, uh, in the school. So English is 60. English, uh, in Greek 10, it's 80. In grade 11, it's 90 points. And in my class, grade 12, it's 40 points. So it differs from one class to another. In grades 7, 8, and 9, it's 40 points. It's 40 all over. When we start secondary classes, 
it jumps to 80 and 90 and 40. Uh, the school year it starts in September and it finishes in mid-June. Students hate schools in September and they hate school in mid-June because September is still holidays and so on. And in mid-June because it's too hot. So they hate when they come to school and the weather is too hot. Uh, we have breaks in December due to the Christmas uh, season. Uh, we have about 11 days holiday from 22 to 3 January. And then we take a little break in spring with the Christians uh, at the beginning of April. At the beginning of April, and it's usually in between 6 days to 12 days. And it differs from one year to another. So the summer holiday can have two months and half. Yes, yeah, summer holiday it starts when we finish the state exams uh, in Lebanon, which is usually about 15 June. And until the 1st of September, we go back to schools. Uh, 1st of September is for grades 9 and 12, who are going to apply for the state uh, exams. And then the other students follow up on 10th of September and so on. Okay, one we'll chance to question. Yeah. Uh, it might sound strange a little bit. Uh, how are your state exams organized? I mean, do you have police? Do you have doctors? Do you have... Uh, Six hand distance doctors, yeah. When you have state exams, are you allowed to go to school if you're not having an exam and you just want to work? I didn't get the question. I, I don't understand you. If you don't have an exam, <laughs> Russian teachers know what I'm talking about. No, I think Russian, Russian state exams look like this that there are two policemen and yes. there are two students and there are doctors because some students feel badly, that's right, uh, on their floor. And uh, teachers are more like, not teachers in these days, but like police officers, watching, going. If they eat far, any kid wants to go to the toilet, they would be supervised. The toilet and back. So that really make a um, very difficult atmosphere for students. And for teachers, imagine that you have to to be, you know, not a person, but a, an officer. Do you have something like this? No, no, it's not like this. We only have uh, uh, people from the military coming just to uh, maintain security in the building, around the building. And who goes inside the building? They are the students who are going to apply for the state exams. And then the teachers, who are usually official and the private teachers, they are usually mixed. And they are chosen randomly for the school so that no cheating uh, happens. Yeah, but you know, for classes. example, uh, I'm a teacher, I'm working at the school. If there is an exam, I'm not allowed to come in even, you know. To yes, my it's the same. Uh, what you were explaining, you know, it's not uh, exactly like that. It's not exactly like that. Okay, then we move on to the textbook. The textbook is chosen by the CRBP. If you would like to visit, the site and take uh, uh, an idea, have an idea about the objectives, the competences and whatever for all subjects, you can visit the CRDP. Uh, they are the ones that uh, uh, choose the books, the official books, or the, the books for the public schools and they are a publication for the classes. Uh, you can apply for changing a little bit, uh, kind of uh, adapting some other books to your classes, but you need permission from the Ministry of Education. If they allow you, you can choose another book. Uh, the students usually pay for the books, the books of the public schools, they are not uh, expensive. Sometimes we have some workbooks for $2, $1, maximum $5. For the private books, for private, the, private, uh, the books for the private schools, they are very expensive. You can get, for example, the books for the English classes for $150. So if you're not rich, you can't go with them. Okay? So uh, the Ministry of Education cannot interfere with the books chosen for the classes. It is the CRDP which uh, cho chooses the books and chooses the training and everything related to the teacher. The Ministry of Education in Lebanon only uh, checks the, uh, when you go to school, how long do you stay there, and all these uh, procedures for the, for the teachers. They don't have to do the only sign and accept what the CRDP uh, does. 
and also uh, uh, ask for uh, training sessions for the teachers and the CRDP applies them. Uh, lessons begin at 8 o'clock and they finish at, seven, at uh, 2 o'clock uh, in the afternoon. Uh, the private schools, most of them, 50% of them, start at 7.30 and they finish at 2.30 and the students don't like it. Uh, what do you mean that they have more lessons? Yes, they have one extra lesson. Break, longer breaks? No, they have one extra lesson and they also have another break during the day and it's only 15 minutes and they can't do anything. They can only drink water or do something very uh, hasty. Uh, the state, uh, the grade 9 and grade 12 students uh, apply for the state's exam and it's usually at the end of May and at the beginning of June. They start with grade 9 students. They start with grade 9 uh, students and then when the grade 9 students take exam finish, they start with grade 12 students. Um, the marks they get, they have to get the, uh, the average uh, mark, uh, which is uh, uh, asked by the, the Minister of Education, for example, you have to get, let me say, 120 points to get to the university. How does it uh, affect or influence the further ed education? Uh, they might uh, give you the profession or uh, uh, let you study the profession in the university according to your score. For example, you can say, I want to be a doctor. I got on biology at 5 over 100. And also, all the students apply for the English levels for all the professions in the university. Uh, uh, for example, if they got uh, 5 over 20 uh, in English, they have to start the levels again in the university. If you got a very high score, they ask you to do only two levels. So you're going to take the consequences of your scores in grade 12 back to the university. And um, when they say that he's taking a private lesson, when you hear the word in Lebanon, he's taking a private lesson, it means that he is a weak student. I don't know why we got this. Uh, uh, it's, uh, I don't know why, why we but take it like that. I usually take private lessons when I would like to get extra information. It's not necessary because I'm a weak student. So they try their best not to, to take private lessons unless there is a very big problem for example, in mathematics with a student and they have uh, to pay uh, uh, more than $20 an hour for the private lesson. So it's too, and this is the, the least, it's too, uh, it's too expensive. Uh, students don't study online. They don't study online. If, uh, if you hear about somebody studying online, it's something, uh, it's a choice of a person in the university and you would like, not like to waste time going and coming and commute to other places so we might study online but in our classes we don't have online studies. But you give uh, I mean um, uh, sometimes when the weather is cold in Russia for example or many kids are at school yes. we close school for a week or let's say or for 10 days then we sign uh, the homework in online journal and students have to open it online and see the homework what is the homework and do it at home. It's an obligation. Yeah. No, it's not an obligation. It's a, it's a personal choice of the teacher to use the Edmodo, which I told you about, and uh, to do links send links to the students, and it's optional if they would like to answer the questions or not. There students, is no obligation. If students will go back to school without this homework done, uh, the teacher will say, but I sent you the homework online. Also, uh, our parents, uh, they see the marks of their students, or the marks of their children online, in this, the same place. So we have a kind of online journal uh, where teachers put marks. Yes, but we don't have such a system in our You still have paper and pen. Yes, paper and pen. I'm going to apply what we have taken, the links and so on, this year uh, in my classes. And I'm going to see how effective it's going to be. And I think it's going to be useful in my class. Uh, the, more the teachers give too much homework. The students hate when they look uh, at the, their agendas uh, at the end of the uh, day and they see that it's stopped with uh, uh, assignments for mathematics, English, and Arabic, and social studies, and whatever. It causes frustration in the school, and sometimes they go to the administration to change 
or to adapt it or to give uh, uh, less amount of the homeworks given. Now sometimes the, uh, it also stress the, uh, the parents at home because they have to help the students do but do why, the homework. Why do you say homework? Because we have seven lessons and it's, uh, it's obligation for each uh, teacher to check whether the students are going to study what they have already taken in class. So they ask us, give them homework, give them homework. So if I go into class and give them homework, then the second teacher, until we finish the seven periods in the class, so you have about six to seven homeworks. So that's why I try my best to give them uh, uh, something which is entertaining or to ask them to read online about a certain subject that we're going to discuss in class. It's not written, it's oral. So I try my, my best uh, as, a, as an English teacher to adapt, let them adapt to the situation. So we try to solve the problem by giving less uh, assignments to, to do. Uh, students uh, study after school, either with the private tutor or their tutor or at home. Um, after school, um, what possibilities do they have? They don't yeah, have any other possibilities. You mean after grade well, if you mean after grade 12, they have uh, uh, after grade uh, 9, also it's allowed for grade 7 and grade 8 students who are looking out of school to go to the vocational sections. They have too many things there, but they are uh, uh, finding it very difficult there because uh, the teenagers there like to smoke and drop out also, so they're not uh, solving the situation. Uh, you can also apply for the university, uh, the Venice University. It's not, uh, uh, it's not uh, expensive. You can pay, let me say, about $350 with uh, uh, something like uh, medical assistance if you need it. And if you want to apply for the master's degree in the Lebanese University, it's maximum $1,000. But if you want to go to the private, Universities, it's too expensive. You have to work too much to get to, to pay for the private universities. It's too expensive. The less, the less, it might reach to five thousand dollars a year. Um, the percentage of students that need private lessons, uh, I can see more than fifty percent. It's more than 50%, but not all the parents uh, apply for private lessons for their students in class because of fi financial problems. Uh, students never study online. Uh, there is a canteen at school. There is a canteen at school, uh, but it also there are uh, there is no free food, and they uh, serve uh, junk food also. But this no, is the reality. Do they have breakfast, lunch? No, no, no. We only we have snacks. Yes, they have snacks. We have a break at 11 o'clock. It finishes at 11.30. You go back to your classes. You stay to 2 o'clock, 2.30 or 3 o'clock maximum when you have seven periods. And there is no free food. Uh, the, the canteen is full of junk food. You have uh, what we call the manaish. The manaish and tea. And the rest is chocolate and chips and chewing gum okay. and so on. This is very different than Russian schools. We have a good breakfast and we I, I can't say that it's very good, but at least it is healthy. Porridge, uh, something like this, you know. Is it free? No, uh, we pay for it, but it's not, it's not my goal. You know, for my daughter, for example, she has lunch and she has breakfast every day at school. I pay about 500 rubles, which means uh, $8, uh, eight dollars, right? $8 dollars for the month. Oh, for the month. Yeah, right away, right? Something like this. Um, yeah, kids are not very happy maybe with the food, but it's a kind of healthy food. You know, porridge in the morning, different kinds every single day. Um, they have um, uh, nice, they, that's not kind of juice. How can I call compost? Mm -hmm. So, how can you say? Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, and um, <laughs> for lunch, they have also for many potatoes, mashed potatoes with the sausages. Uh, maybe a kind of liver, you know, so it, and the salad and soup. They, every, every day they have soup. They don't have and this. besides, and besides, uh, so every morning the teacher takes uh, how many students, and one of the students comes to the canteen to give the time from class blah blah blah, and we have to take ten or twenty, and they serve it in the special trays. And besides, they have this from biscuits, chocolate, and uh, juice. But uh, not so much. We don't have any. Of this is under control. This is under serious control in our schools. No, we don't. We don't have this.
distances from long time ago. We used to have a canteen of junk food and if you would like the juice, it's also the canned juice and water. And uh, that's it. We don't have what you're talking about. Um, uh, we pay for everything at school. For example, when you want to have uh, food in the canteen, you have to pay the E and it might reach maximum to $2 a day. And the books, uh, you pay for your books. If it's free from the school, you have to give uh, them back. And if you pay for it at the beginning of the year, you can keep them. And if there is uh, any um, film trip during the year, you have to pay for it. So there is nothing free. And um, the Ministry of Education is the first to uh, control the educational process in all the schools. Uh, it is helped to the administration. Each school has uh, a staff of teachers and administrations and so on, and also English teachers and other uh, subjects. Uh, about the English uh, teachers, the English teachers, they are supervised by the councillors. I am one of the councillors in Lebanon. I have to uh, move each day to a new school to see whether the, the English teachers are uh, following the rules of the Ministry of Education and I have to apply, uh, set, uh, check the criteria, if they are meeting the criteria needed by the Ministry of Education and I have to do a checklist and write uh, reports and many other papers who have to apply for every day I attend a school or I, I attend the, or talk to the English teachers. Uh, advantages of the educational system in the country, the Lebanese students love each other too much, and even though they sometimes fight, like in any other school, in, in, uh, in anywhere, it happens. The disadvantages is that it takes too long for them to change the curriculum in the schools. So you can say every 30 to 35 years, or every 30 years, the average, is every 30 years they change the curriculum. So now the, the books we are teaching the students, it doesn't include anything related to technology or online or everything. So it is, it's, it's very old and the students uh, feel that they are very boring. That is why we are going to start this summer with new books and I think it's going to take them about two years to finish uh, a new curriculum and apply it in all, uh, in all the schools, something which is uh, uh, related to the new technological advance in the countries and I don't uh, know if they're going to add other subjects other than chemistry and physics and English and cultural studies and so on. I uh, asked them whether they, they're going to include, for example, translation sessions because it's very important. Most students say that we didn't write the answer to this question because we didn't understand the, the word, how it's translated into Arabic. So they give translation only for grade 11. All of the students in the classes and other classes, they never take translation. Okay, so, and they, uh, the, uh, you rarely see also a period for reading, reading sessions, reading books in the library. The library is only a touristic site. <laughs> yes, so, thank you. Welcome. Thank you so much. And before we are preparing, I just want to say that was <laughs> Yeah, gizmo. 
Tatiana, you did fights, right? And um, in Kazakh school, you have to be very fight, hard, right? Fight. <laughs> Just 
school are free and there's private. But what I am saying, I'm, I, I see right now that the government try to shift everything to private. So they try to do this, um, but still uh, the family can afford for their kids to study. Then the the government must um, must take care of kids, must pay for education for um, uh, for a low. Uh, low uh, family that they need support. Uh, how many lessons do students have every day? Well, it depends. In which stage? Even primary school or high school or uh, university uh, studies? In primary school, there is a lot are such and the students suffer a lot much about that and we all criticize this point because this this curriculum it doesn't work because student a child doesn't need all this stuff he needs um, time to to play time to and we deal with student a child like an adult the child he needs to play Free time, need strong job, and is a child. Okay. Well, there is a lot from science, from literature, from languages. All, all this in one package, and that's a lot. So when they start English, when they have well, the the yes, idea. it's a good question. Thank you. Uh, English in Morocco is not necessary. You don't have to study English if you want. English, it's optional, and students get start studying English until the last year in the secondary school. The first year in high school, it could be obliged, but for some subjects like literature and um, human science. Okay. But for science, it's not important, and that's the problem. Why? Well, it's it's government option. Because you have another language. It's French. Because French. Sure. That's the problem. French dominant and still has a strong point in the education. So every subject is uh, taught by French. Yeah, but in, uh, when do you start English? We start English from page 1 to page 12 to the university and it's optional to take French classes. So we study English and Arabic and when you reach to grade 4 they start teaching French and it's optional. And in other schools they give the, they give the Persian uh, uh, classes but also it's also optional. But English is an obligation. Because they know that they're going to go to other countries and they need English language. Yes, it's the, from government. Yeah. Yes, it's from the, the government. The thing is that English is not necessary. So if you don't speak English in Morocco, that's fine. You can work. You can live with it. <laughs> uh, sorry, you trust me. You know, English in Morocco is mandatory to be six or to speak English. You can live with English. English. You can work without English, you can do anything. It's a mandatory in a system. Education to be a diploma is a kind of process to be a diploma and so on. But well, I think the point that he wants to, uh, to convey is that it's not that important in our society to get a job. Okay, it's a second language, like, but in French. French is mandatory because without French, you cannot have a job. Okay? But English is necessary, mandatory, but it's a... Uh, uh, maybe most of the students say, why am I going to, to, to learn English? Because at the end, I'm, just, I'm only French in my country. I think it's the same in Russia also. But you don't need you English to work. Popular, it's not necessary to work in Russia. No, in some countries, in some, uh, if you want to get a good job, even in, even in the bank or whatever, you have to, you have to. 
give the certificate or whatever. Yes. Um, back to the point. Um, so, English is not important. Okay? It is important. It's not 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 important. To get a job or something. It's not important. So, you have to. To study French, French is, is, is the first uh, uh, first foreign language. I mean, in, the uh, first foreign language in Morocco is French, and the foreign language in Morocco is English. Okay, that's what I mean. And I don't mean that English is not important <laughs> for the world. It's everything in English, but inside Morocco, it's not uh, important. You can you can work and live. Uh, Without English, you can find it's fine. How long it's uh, in the lesson? Well, most of uh, lessons to to our. Sorry. Yes. How much? How long? Um, two hours for this chapter. Uh, that, that's uh, sorry. Maybe the information. Two hours for the high school and the elementary schools. That is, it's an hour and a half. Yes. And for primary, it's 20 days, 45 minutes. Yes. Uh, okay. yes. But this two hours two. is a block. So 45, yeah, hours. 45 minutes, so one hour and a half. Okay, in, it's depend. It's depend. In primary school, there is um, this uh, four staff from 8 o'clock morning and end at 1 and a half and then no. And the rest of the day is free. Or opposite, with some teachers teach talk in the evening and they don't do that in the morning. So you are you have only one half day, you can teach and go. So it's, uh, this is for primary school. The secondary school, the course is uh, uh, each subject is good two hours on, on each subject. Uh, then the same as high school, but the university is so so how many lessons per day? Yes? How many lessons per day? How many lessons do you have every day? In school? In the secondary school, for example? Is it six? Two. Uh, in secondary school, sometimes you have two, three, four. It depends. It depends on the timetable you have. So each student has his own timetable. That means it's about four or six hours per day. Yes, it's okay. not a lot. Most of the time, six hours. Two, sometimes you have one, 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 four, four and six, six hours. hours. It's depend. It depends on the temperature we have. Well, the grades. So I have to use the uh, marker. This is the result. You see, it's a very good result. So in what we use. So the holidays, there's two kinds of holidays. 
there's orange holidays and there's national holidays. And also the holiday, summer holiday and uh, spring holiday. Yes. The, correct, um, the box of textbook. Uh, I just mentioned here English box. Then we have, have uh, this way. That These are unfocused. So it, this, each region has its own textbook. And also, uh, one thing for, for pri uh, private uh, sector, you can teach with any book, and that's. Yeah, but I want nice. to say, I want to say that your authors they show the names of very uh, <laughs> famous books. You know, when you show me the book, I teach to be very well, lucky you, because I thought. But the exam is depend on the, the first book, Gateway. Yes. The exam is depend on this book. It's additional information in the other books. And the exam is come, the exam of English will be based only for the Gateway. Yes. This one is additional information for the. You get it. <sighs> it's the same uh, also in the Russian. Yeah. You don't have one book. You are uh, out of book. But it's what you want. No, visa is for common code. No, this is for level. And the other one for I think the second baccalaureate. So second baccalaureate. One book for each class.
standard exam uh, and there is um, exam, uh, I mean, the assessment in, in Morocco is based on two things. There is a national exam, it, it, could, it could be 75. It, in my, where I was studying, it was just 50. Now, more. Than that. Okay? Every year, uh, she means about every class. The first class, second class, great. You, the first grade, second grade, third grade have state exam, or only oh. ninth and twelve. For um, for uh, baccalaureate, four school. Okay, exam. only for the twelfth grade, yeah. Yes. Old the first grade not have. Uh, state exam, right? They, they have. They have. And like at the end of the primary school, you need to skip to. Uh, it's a sixth grade, grade, ninth grade, ninth grade, and twelfth grade. Yeah. Yes. So the general exam. The general yeah, exam yeah, state exam. From the but the seventh, the, the eighth, the eleven, no state exam. Yeah. Yeah. So for the end of elementary. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Because everything about grade, I think the students sometimes get involved just to study or just for grade. You don't study for study. You want to study for a good grade because they know that the job market only the place market gives open for those who have a good mark, a uh, good mark. But we can't just assess any human being about his. Mark. Okay? So he all a good result at school. Maybe he cheated or something else, but um, the thing is, this is not fair. Uh, Mr. Mbarti have another point concerning this. It's concerning Morocco is uh, also has what kind of uh, rote learning. Okay? You start with the formation and at the end, okay, uh, if you are required to just give the information. Like Can I ask one question? Yeah. For the, the grades that you get, is it like the ranking system where if you want to study a certain field that you have to have a good grade in the subject that you're related to that? So yes. Yeah. That's what I mean. I said everything about grade. Right. Like you can have like 10 or 20, that you have no choice. You only have the state university or AST. It's a technical. You can do something, uh, handcraft like jobs um, that based on some um, uh, industry or some uh, something to, to work with your hands. But but the thing is, if you if you don't have a good mark, you can access to some field like medicine, like yeah, the same thing. Yeah, you can access to yeah. <laughs> Uh, what percentage of students need private lessons? And actually, this 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 part it's for Mustafa. Uh, yeah. You can join. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, I guess I'm curious about uh, Moroccan system education. First of all, I would like to ask a question. What do you know about Moroccan system educational system? We learned a lot. Yeah, before, that's what you have in mind. For that, Finland is the first one worldwide. We know that. But Moroccan, maybe. Have any? No? Okay. Just let me start a little bit about reforms. Uh, Morocco um, has done a lot of reforms concerning the uh, uh, system of education, educational system. It starts from the 1986, the year of independence of Morocco, and still now. And a lot of money has spent uh, without any good result. And the last uh, reform is, uh, is uh, what we call a new vision, is 2015-2020. Uh, it's a good vision concerning um, 
empowering students, um, making them creative, uh, using ICT, it's a great, if you say, okay, in a, re re in a written form. And they hope, okay, the, 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 the Ministry of Education can, can do it, can do it. Okay, so for the uh, first question, is this the question? What percentage of students need private instead? The main question of it, or already? Uh, no, in the country. Already in the country, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, do students study online? The second question. Um, uh, the most majority of students in Morocco do not study online. Uh, we have recently the university staff subjected MOOC exams, like online, far distance, but it's still um, uh, not that uh, uh, generalized in all universities. I think it's Morocco. Uh, start seriously okay, to think about this and to integrate ICT in our uh, education system. And uh, maybe it can be good individually and uh, students can teach them online, okay, university, that's individually. Now, okay. How much homework do teachers need? Can you guess? Can you guess? Let's guess. How much? Three exercises. For every student, for every student, it can be three or more. Yeah, it can be three or more for each student and for many subjects. You know, there's a lot of many subjects and, and a lot of uh, homeworks, and that's um, a little bit um, bad for our students because um, they, uh, they got exhausted. Mm, uh, they don't have enough time for rest because they study from uh, from eight to uh, to three p.m. for private, and they, they are obliged to do the exercises again for tomorrow, and that's not effective I think. And this is what uh, Finland ex uh, excel at this. I think excel at uh, giving them uh, homework. To we do students study after school. Okay, what possibilities do they have? Absolutely. Uh, for a rural area, they don't have much choice, just home. They can study at home. But for some big cities, it's okay. They can study at uh, public libraries we have there. Or for university students, they can study, of course, uh, in, at library. And uh, for high school students, they can study at school, with a library at school. Do you have any clubs at school? Club? Yeah. I mean, um, in Russia, it's, um, you have choice for your students. Uh, there are musical lessons, extra, mm. you know, sports. Um, yeah, some. Yeah, of course. Of course, course some like the English club, we have English club. Yeah. No, English club is money, but these are but in, but in Morocco, is English club is like a, a space where you can learn because it's a second language. Uh, yeah? English is the third language, not French and French. Yeah. 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 But the second is a foreign language. English. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We say, yeah. We, no, we, say, we say English between English. Say English is the second language because the, the first language is, yeah. uh, is French. And okay, mother tongue is Arabic. You get it? Yeah. 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 Is there a canteen at school? Free food or canteen? Okay. Canteen. Um, we were talking about private school, yes. We have good canteens, we have uh, facilities that so on. And the, pr and the price is a little bit uh, higher, but most of uh, students in high school, in, in private school, are rich, okay, they come from rich families. But in private school, in, in public school, I think uh, for primary, we have some canteens. But um, it's like humble. The food there is uh, like dates, uh, some beans, milk. Okay, they're not rich food. Uh, they don't eat rich food or something like that. Yeah. It was normal. It was free. You know, can see it's free. What do you have to pay for at school? Uh, in public school, it's free in Morocco. Uh, you pay, you pay uh, a little bit of money, you pay for enrollment, 
fees, like prescription fee in Romania. We pay for us, uh, insurance, and that's it. We don't have books. to. Yeah, of course, books. Yeah, of course, books. Books and your tools, etc. Bottles. Who controls the educational process and English teacher? This is a kind of um, process of controlling the uh, uh, education system in Morocco. Start from the head of school, the director. And then um, the director is uh, like uh, visited sometime uh, by supervisors, okay, and guided by supervisors. Uh, and then supervisors, um, they are sent from uh, education uh, institute of, of uh, Ministry of Education. And all the policy, the whole policy, uh, is okay, about the Ministry of Education. The Ministry of Education chooses the books, chooses the right books and so on, and uh, like determine the policy and uh, uh, the way everything okay, will change. What are the advantages and disadvantages of educational system? Okay, let's start with advantages. We have, a, we have some advantages in, uh, what do you think, too many subjects? Is it advantage or disadvantage? Fees. Fees, yeah. Fees. In Morocco, we have many, uh, many uh, subjects. But that's uh, good for students because they have uh, a kind of insight, okay, um, in every field. Okay? Sorry, what do you mean about many of subjects? Hmm? What do you mean about many of subjects? Uh, maths, what? Maths. Physics, philosophy, geography, Arabic, history, English, history, uh, geography, history, religion, yeah. sports, Sport, music, yeah. everywhere, all these subjects, not only in Morocco, in Egypt, in Russia, everywhere, are, these subjects. I think their system, they are uh, specialized in, in, in early. No, we don't have something like philosophy. We don't have it. We also we don't have philosophy. We don't have religion. Religion only. Yeah, religion. It's addition. Islamic, Islamic, we have, we have many subjects. Really many subjects. Theologia, the physical. Like French, like French, English, philosophy, Arabic, geography, math, SBT, what we call science, uh, biology, and yeah. uh, physics, sports. That's a thing. So much for teenagers. Can I ask and a quick uh, question? Uh, uh, can I ask this one kind of stupid question, actually? It's a very Irish yeah, question. Yeah. Are classes co-educational? Are they mixed, boys and girls? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, no, of course. <laughs> I'm just curious, because I don't yeah, know. Yeah, no problem. Because you know, Morocco, Morocco uh, even in this Islamic country, but if you discover the country, you cannot say it's Islamic country. It's like people are open-minded and they are really open-minded. Maybe it's like, like a, a, a New York country with street and people are being and so on. Yeah. Different mentality. Uh, for the advantages, for the advantages, uh, another advantage is teacher-oriented. Teacher-oriented, okay? Like an orientation for teachers, okay? And for example, uh, again, it's oriented. Okay? And that's the of the translation. These uh, the advantages, there are, there are a lot. I'm going to say a lot. Just some. Okay. For, uh, let's start with, teachers are recruited without training any tools. And that's that. Something to say? You think that? Yeah, you can have the diploma and certificate and so on. Yeah. Only diploma, you go to teach. Without any serious knowledge, okay? Understand? Especially recently, recently, okay? Any training, okay? And not enough boarding school. What's the boarding school? We have a shortage in boarding schools where uh, you can stay, okay? Mm, less invest, investment in education. We don't give too much uh, importance to education. And also, we have a kind of high dropping out. Race of students that's, that's quit school. Yeah. 
And what they do after that, and they have questions. Um, you stay at home, or just you do some humble jobs or something like that. Oh, you just wondering, you just that's a problem. Stay at home. Thank you. Curriculum, I think curriculum, I put in bracket, is not that good. There is no listening skill. It doesn't lead you to communicate, okay, with a baccalaureate student, okay, with four, six years of learning English. They cannot give you a, a good, correct sentence. They cannot communicate with you. This is a problem. Um, French again, French system, because the most is French system, okay? And uh, we are colonized with, uh, by France, and so everything is in France. And I think it's a uh, in French, and it's, uh, I think it's a problem for us to, to continue to use, like to, 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 to keep a bridge to the newest things in the world, because we need to translate all the things from French to English in order to, okay? Okay, thank you so much. And uh, I'll do it with you. What other subjects do you have? Can they explain? We did, yeah. We did? We did. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. I hope you get something okay, useful. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Graham, it's your turn. He has a task. He does. Yeah. He thought maybe it might so, be Thomas first. It would be more interesting to have a, sort of a break and just be talking and listening. So, Tom's going to. Okay. Is that okay with you? Yeah, please. Okay, first of all, please get up, stretch, get a glass of water, go to the bathroom. Take about two minutes, two, three minutes. Okay? Olevapa, <clears throat> be free.